Hi there, Andy. How's it going? How are you? I'm Darren. Thanks hey, so Darren. much. Thanks for having me here today. Thanks for coming. You are watching EW Lightbulb, presented by Glade. Andy, it's such an honor to have you here on EW Lightbulb. You know, Watch What Happens Live is such a, it's a very modern show, but in a lot of ways it is kind of a throwback talk show. Did you kind of like envision that going into Watch What yes, Happens Live? Yes, absolutely. And the throwback thing actually started with the chairs. They reminded me of Dick Cavett old chairs, basically. And the idea is you're just, I'm inviting you into my home at 11 o'clock live. We don't pre-interview our guests. It, you know, everything is so canned in the world of talk shows now. It's here, perfectly it's, scripted. Yeah, in, in it's a totally way. unscripted here. Well now, uh, you mentioned Dick Cavett. Yes. What other kind of like influences like you know, did you take from him or from other talk shows? Um, my other big influence is Howard Stern. Howard just goes there with his questions and I try to do the same thing. I mean, I think people know that they're gonna get a different interview if they see Nicki Minaj on my show versus Ellen. Now, I want to talk a little bit about your transition from being a behind-the-scenes producer for so long, then you kind of begin doing on-camera stuff, and that yeah. just kind of becomes more and more your life. This was my dream, to be in front of the camera a long time ago, and I had given up on my dream. So the transition all was really organic, and it was one step after the next. I was a producer at CBS News for 10 years, and so I interviewed people for my entire 10 years. I then hosted this online after show after Top Chef and Project Runway on Bravo. And it on was- On the internet. On the <laughs> internet, wow. And on bravotv.com. And it just felt cool and loose and I felt like, okay, I can do this. And then we needed someone to do a Housewives reunion and my, my boss at the time said, do you want to do it? And it'll kind of be like your online show, but on air. And I jumped at the opportunity. <laughs> there, one of the great things about the Housewives reunions is that they're celebrating these personalities. You're also kind of asking all the questions that we as the viewer always want people to ask. Yes. What's that balance kind of like? You know, I mean, it's, it's part celebration and part, you know, grilling on the barbecue. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of, so it's about finding the happy medium. Does that get harder for you to sort of balance that as you've been doing no, it for I'm so long? No, I'm just kind of used to it. I'm always thinking about the show as a fan and I'm thinking about it as a producer. I feel like in a lot of ways, the field of reality television is still very young in yeah. a lot of respects. Was there anything that you worked on where you, where you were kind of thinking, this is probably not gonna connect with people and then it really did? Well, I mean, I remember when the first episode of Top Chef aired and I was like, oh, I, I, I pray, you know, I don't know. I don't know. You know, you never know what's gonna connect and what isn't. And Top Chef actually started slowly, and then it really started to build by the end of that first season. So and you now don't it's a know. Mega franchise. And same with the Real Housewives. I mean, I thought, oh, you know, we almost killed that show. It was so plagued in season one with troubles in the edit room. We wound up getting rid of the original producers. We brought someone else in. It was a nightmare to produce. And we and we contemplated for a moment saying, well, should we just scrap this? <laughs> I mean, thank God we didn't do that. I mean, <laughs> well, and then people tend to assume that people are all fake on reality TV. And right. one thing that I, I remember uh, you mentioned in, in your first book is the idea that, you know, fakeness will come out on reality television. Our viewers are so smart. They can tell when someone's faking it or they're pandering to the audience or they're trying to uh, manipulate the story so that people view them in a different way. They can just tell. And it always winds up kind of coming back at them. You've talked a bit about how when you were growing up you were a great fan of soap operas. Was that kind of part of the inspiration for The Real Housewives? Was, was it this In notion In my of... mind I thought that when we were first creating the show at Bravo, it was so interesting that they all lived in this cul-de-sac and they, they lived in the same gated community down the street from each other and there was something very exciting to me as a, as a producer about that. Are there things in, in the culture now that you look to as you're kind of generating new shows? I mean, you know, I'm very actively involved producing this show. Mm -hmm. uh, this is really my daily uh, chemistry set of fun and inspiration. And this show is really what keeps me going. The skill set just seems like there's so many different things involved each, yeah, each night. I don't know. I think the interesting thing is when I started the show, that was when I started feeling uh, insecure about myself, which I had never. And then suddenly I, you're on camera. Suddenly when I was doing my own show, I just started thinking, who am I? Why does anyone care? What do, who do you think you are? Why are you doing this? You're and, having a and, mini existential crisis yes, each time you Conan go Conan said, oh, well, that never goes away. <laughs> I'm pretty good with it now. <laughs> Kelly Ripa once told me, it's never as great as you thought it was, and it's never as bad as you thought it was. So if you leave thinking, oh my God, that was so bad, she's like, 
And that's a really good But also in turn, if you leave thinking, well, that's it, the greatest moment in TV history, it's like, well, yes, it's probably. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Now, sometimes you watch it and you're like, that was pretty great. <laughs> it was a moment where Carol Burnett was doing her Tarzan yell. My dog was here running around and he jumped up on her because he was freaking out at her Tarzan call. <laughs> and it was just this spontaneous moment and she was laughing so hard. And to see Carol Burnett be surprised on television where she, you know, where she's been performing for 50 years was was such a treat for me. It was <laughs> so great. That was a moment where, when I watched it back, it was as great as I uh -huh. as I thought. Watch all of EW Lightbulb presented by Glade.